Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, November 13th, and it's a difficult day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Weather certainly isn't cooperating. It's uh, overcast, cold, damp. November in Pennsylvania. What are you going to do? Uh, if you follow me at all on social media and you know, here on YouTube, you, you saw the news. My dad passed away on Friday, uh, November 11th, Veterans Day. And I canceled the live stream uh, because that was obviously not in any, uh, any frame of mind to, to do something like that. And I did let people know I, I changed the live stream thumbnail and I got to eventually remove that. And uh, I put a post on Instagram as well because so many folks have been, you know, praying and, and offering good thoughts and well wishes and everything in both the Instagram pipe community and, and the YouTube pipe community. Pardon me while I grab a tamper. That I, yeah, I wanted to let everyone know what had happened. Um, I was not prepared for the outpouring of condolences and prayers and support and offers to do anything. Uh, I was just overwhelmed within moments of my, you know, revealing this information. I was inundated is the wrong word because it sounds bad. There was nothing bad about this, but I was, I was flooded with all this kindness and it lasted. I mean, I'm still getting things today and I'm so grateful for that. It's been such a sense of, of, of support and love uh, over the past couple of days that it's, uh, it's carried me through this, to be honest. It's carried me through. So, yeah, he passed away on, on Friday evening, um, late Friday afternoon. He, um, he apparently had been sick. Well, if, if you don't know, he had been hospitalized for about a month now and was uh, you know, kidney failure plus a lot of other complicated factors. And uh, he was nauseated, so, you know, being sick. And they gave him some medication to to help him with that and to help him sleep. And he was really tired out. And he went to sleep and he didn't wake up. He just, he just stayed sleeping. Now, you might wonder what the heck I'm doing sitting here in my basement talking to you. Um, and, you know, I wonder that myself a bit, but we'll get to it. Uh, because my family's relatively small and yeah, compliant with his wishes, to, to be frank, um, we're not having a service. We're not going to... Uh, do anything other than you know, Catholic rites, and then there'll be a cremation, and that's it. So that's what he wanted. Um, it's a little strange for me because you know it's just like he's just gone. You know, there's no. But I got a chance to talk to him uh, and spend time with him and. Uh, care for him in the hospital a couple weeks ago and I'm so grateful for that it was, it was uh, yeah in the moment I didn't realize how important it was going to be to me but now I I see how you know, how important those moments were so I'm very grateful for that I've been and the reason by the way that I'm making this video is that this is therapeutic for me. I, I get to talk, you know, I get to talk to you, and I know you're listening, and so many of you have, have, have reached out and, and offered me your, your support and your love and your prayers. And, um, I feel like I, I need to give something back. Not, not, that I, not that it's an expectation, but it's just something inside me that needs to, you know, so I need to convey these things to you, and I need to I need to let you know how I'm how I feel, and and that I'm okay. Uh, and I really am okay, and that's kind of remarkable because if you asked me last week how I would be 
if this were to happen, I'd say, oh, I'm going to be a mess. Yeah, I'm going to be a complete mess. My dad. I lost my mom. I guess it's about 10 years ago now. I should know. And that was hard. Um, I did not see her. I talked to her a few weeks before. She was pretty sick uh, with, with cancer. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't didn't have all the information, and I'm, I'm going to try real hard not to point fingers here, but my sister was probably, probably hoping for, for the best in a situation where there wasn't going to be a best. And so I didn't know how bad things were. So my mom passed away, and while I did talk to her, I did not get a chance to see her. And so there was this need to have a viewing and a funeral and all of that. Um, and I was, I was upset after that. But I wasn't as broken down and, and inconsolable and yeah, as I thought I would be. And then I thought, well, okay, that's, you know, half the parents are gone. <laughs> when I lose my dad, it's gone going to be a, a real problem and it is you know in a sense I do have this this deep sense of loss it's more about you know I'm not gonna be able to call him anymore and tell him what happened I'm not gonna be able to ask his advice anymore I'm not gonna have um, you know things I'll remember from childhood and I, I won't quite remember correctly and I want him to help me but I don't have that anymore that's what hurts you know but We've got this sense as people of faith, if, if, you, if you are a person of faith, we have this, this belief that there's a life beyond this. And, and I know that, you know, it's not, it's not just that I believe it, I know it. I know it very, very well. And I know he's there. And I know that I'm on a journey to the same place. And someday we'll be back together again. So that's, that's what kind of pulls me through this, yeah. And honestly, I don't have the sadness. That's not it. It's hard to put into words. I'm not. I'm not grieving. In sadness, I'm sad because of the loss. But I'm not grieving in sadness. I'm grieving in faith. And I guess that's that's what the, what I want to say there. As you can see, I'm just kind of working through these things. <laughs> but uh, so I will be going up to Vermont, um, probably not until after Thanksgiving, because there's no need. Um, all the services are, are being done privately, and um, he's being cremated. So there's not going to be a viewing or anything. Uh, and my sister is okay. You know, talk to her. Talk to my brother. I'm going to talk to him again later today. Uh, I got to go up though, and we got to start settling his estate and those sorts of things. Unfortunately, I don't believe he left a will, which is it's not going to be a problem because we're my sister and I are in complete agreement, and my brother as well. Uh, there's no worries about you know fighting over things, but there's still a legal process that you have to go through, which is a pain. So we got to get all that in order. But, you know, I wanted to, wanted to spend a few minutes just telling you a little bit about my dad, you know, the kind of guy he was. Because he's, I'm in a lot of ways a reflection of, of who he was. At least I hope I, I am. So he grew up in a uh, small town uh, named Port Jervis, which I've always been confused by this. I believe it's New York, but it's like right on the, it's right in that area where New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania come together. It might be New Jersey, but it's, it's I think it's New York. Uh, Delaware Water Gap region, really beautiful area. Small town, uh, woods, fishing, all hiking, all kinds of things. Um, 
And he remembered that picture at the front here, and I've got a, another bit of it here that I'll show you. That picture is from a newspaper. That's actually my dad. He was 10 years old. There was a large flood in Port Jervis. This was probably 1955. And uh, he was out riding his bike in the water. <laughs> and the newspaper took a picture of it. He was in the, in the paper. And he remembered that while he was in the hospital and told my sister about it. And she was able to actually find the, uh, the, the newspaper based on the information that he had given her uh, about the, the date and the name of the, the local paper. So that was kind of cool. He met my mom, so he he graduated high school and he traveled around. Uh, he was working in Wildwood, New Jersey, at one of the, the rides on one of the piers in, in Wildwood. Uh, you know the amusement rides, and that's where he met my mom. And uh, they they dated for a while. He actually took a trip. To Mexico. He and a friend drove down to Mexico. Uh, and I know that because my mom would tell me about it. She had letters that he wrote her while he was traveling. And he had this collection of pesos and things like that that I used to play with when I was a kid. So he made that trip down to Mexico, spent some time in Mexico, and drove, and drove back, and, uh, you know, saw a bit of the country that way. Got married. Um, got married in uh, 64. I believe I think that's right and uh, I was born in, in 66 maybe it was 64 I, I don't quite remember yeah, maybe it was 64 because he was 20 years old he was born in 44 so yeah he, was, he got married when he was 20 1964 I came along in 66 his dad was um, distant and not around a lot. And at a very early age, he garnered a lot of responsibility for his younger. He was the oldest, and he had five sisters and one brother that he was kind of responsible for. Uh, I don't know enough about my maternal grandmother or my maternal grandfather to, to give you much information about the situation there, but I know my dad had a lot of responsibility at a very young age, and it sort of shaped him. You know, looking back, I can see how his approach to life, which was always very matter of fact, you gotta do what you gotta do, and you go to work. It doesn't matter if you're sick, you go to work. Uh, that was probably shaped by his early, uh, by his young responsibilities in life. Uh, his dad would come back occasionally, and. He told me when I was in the hospital talking to him that, and that this was odd because I, I, anything I had ever heard about my maternal grandfather, but my, I'm sorry, paternal, I hope I wasn't saying maternal earlier. My paternal grandfather was just that he left, you know, I didn't know anything about him. And we're, we're in the hospital and my dad's not, you know, he's kind of going in and out and I don't know what's right and what's wrong. And he says to me, you know, Jerry Lee Lewis died, and we had the news on, and they just announced that Jerry Lee Lewis had died, and I told him, and he said, yeah, he was he was something, and he said, you know, my dad took me to see Chuck Berry. And I said, oh, really? He said, oh, yeah, he was fantastic. It was great. It was, it was, well, he was just getting start, getting his start, and I was surprised by this because I didn't know his dad, you know, did anything with him, and I said, where was that? And he said, oh, it was in 19, 1954. He took me into New York to the Apollo Theater, and we saw Chuck Berry. I thought, wow, okay. And he started telling me about the show, how fantastic it was, and how he, you know, he like changed music and everything. And it was a nice, nice little chat we had. And I checked it out later, and it turns out that Chuck Berry did do a single show at the Apollo in 1954. So that's pretty cool. I, I did not know he had a relationship with his dad, and I didn't know that uh, he had ever seen Chuck Berry. So. Uh, yeah, so, you know, he, he was a he was a, a responsible man. He, he, he worked hard. He did his whole life. He always took care of things. He took care of others before himself. 
uh, not just his family, you know, people outside the family. Uh, he, one of the women that works at the hospital that uh, was actually a, not a caretaker, but part of like administrative staff, uh, she came to visit him because she was a friend of my sister and she drove up to visit with my sister uh, that lives in Vermont, but yeah. When you live in Vermont, it can be three hours away from somebody because the highways are terrible. And so, anyway, <laughs> she drove up to see my sister. And uh, my dad noticed that she had bad tires. And he said, you know, those tires are, you're, you're going to get an accident. They're, they're bald. You have to get new tires. And she said, I know, but I, I just can't afford it. And, you know, I'll try to, try to get them soon. My dad went and put 400 tires on the car for her. Did, you know, barely knew her. That's just the kind of person he was when he saw something that needed to be done. He, he made sure it got done, regardless of the cost. Regardless of the cost to him. You know, my dad wasn't a wealthy man. Buying those four tires hurt him. Uh, but he couldn't see that person drive around on, on ball tires. The kind of guy he was. He was quiet. Uh, didn't have a lot of friends, didn't, didn't go out, didn't have a social life really other than his family. Uh, introverted. And I get a lot of that from him. And, you know, he's, he certainly is going to remain with me in my memories, but he's with me because I learned so much from him, just watching him, about what's right and wrong, how to, how to do things, how to how to think, how to be logical, how to set priorities, how to say this is important, this is less important. Um, you know, you got to pay your bills before you have fun, that kind of thing. Baseball. I mean, everything I know about baseball, I learned at his side. And uh, it's a real blessing to me that one of the, well, the last thing we did together was uh, we watched the Phillies in the World Series. <laughs> First game, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and he's he's going to be with me always because I notice him in myself. I do things sometimes and I surprise myself and I say, wow, that's exactly what my dad would do. Just mannerisms. You know, I I have this habit of if I'm going to change the channel on the TV, my wife always has the remote control. So I have to get up, walk across the room, get the remote control if I'm the only person in the house. And that's the only time I change the channel because <laughs> I don't have rights to do that. So I have to get up, walk over to where she keeps the remote control. And I will start to flip through channels and I will stand there with the remote control in my hand, just scrolling through channels. My left hand is behind my back, like in the small of my back, and I'm just... And I'll stand there for a really long time. And then it'll suddenly dawn on me, that's exactly what my dad used to do. Uh, now, later in life, he kept the remote control by his side. But for a while, it was kept on a table, and you had to get up to get it. And um, he would just stand there. And, and, you know, little things like that. Catch myself staring at grocery store shelves sometimes. And I remember him doing that and being so aggravated with him. You know, come on, I want to get out of the darn grocery store. And you're just standing there staring at beans or whatever. <laughs> but I do it too. I'll notice something new in a grocery store that I have no intention of buying. That, you know, something that I have no interest in. But yet it's different and I'll have to look at it and I'll have to figure it out. And I'll have to understand why it's there. And that's my dad. So yeah, he's, he's with me in a very real sense. And he's with God. And someday we'll we'll be together again. And that's what faith does for you. So I've probably gone a long time. I hope you indulge me in that. Oh, this isn't bad. This is only about 20 minutes. I didn't do too bad after all. <laughs> again, uh, if I didn't say this earlier, I should have. Thank you so much, all of you, for all the love and, and prayers and support. It's, it's made this bearable. It's gotten me through. 
Thank you for watching this. I know it's not the cheeriest of videos, and I'm not the uh, my normal effervescent self. <laughs> As if I've ever been effervescent. But uh, it's helped me. It's helped me a lot. And maybe you learned something about me. By the way, wanted bookshop in a Rick Black Morta. Should have said that earlier. Well, folks, I'm going to go. I don't know what Sunday holds for me, but I'm going to enjoy the rest of this pipe and, uh, and move on. So I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed Sunday, and we're looking forward to a great week ahead. Thank you all once again, and until we speak again, I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Thank you.